Happy Thursday, my wonderful partners in life. So great news. As the border dissolves like a sandcastle on the beach, inflation soars and crime runs rampant, what's the Department of Homeland Security consumed with? I'll give you a hint. It ain't Homeland Security. It's what you have to say about them and their failures. Apparently, they're as thin-skinned as Nancy Pelosi's eyelids. Ooh. <laughs> Yesterday, in a hearing on immigration, that bald fellow with the adorable ears announced the Disinformation Governance Board in order to combat online misinformation. You know, because the real problems we face, apparently, are our opinions, not our incompetent actions. It's like blaming fires on the fire department. I mean, they always seem to be around right after I start one. <laughs> a just recently constituted uh, a misinformation, disinformation governance board. So we're bringing, uh, the goal is to bring the resources of the department together to address this threat. Mm, fun fact, he had hair like Fabio before he worked with Kamala Harris. <laughs> and why does he remind me of this guy? Oh. I just want to squeeze his head like a pastry bag filled with whipped cream. And that would be the beginning. Well, I hope they found a good person to head up the board. Someone who could tell the difference between real and fake. Who can objectively judge evidence and refrain from making snap decisions without any proof. Oh, it's Nina Jankowitz. <laughs> She's directing the board. I wouldn't trust her to direct a Polly Shore movie. <laughs> she just shared her official government portrait on her social media profile. Cats out of the bag, she said. But really, whoever picked her had to be half in the bag to select this doofus. She's further to the left than the green monster at Fenway. The baseball <laughs> reference cat. Mm. I know my sports. In case you're unaware, Jankowitz had questioned the validity of Hunter Biden's laptop early on, actually calling it a Trump campaign product, which raises some questions. One, how is she an expert? And two, you got to be kidding me. How could she even qualify for this job if she got that wrong? Oh, I forgot. We're talking about a Biden administration job. What are they going to do next? Put Kamala in charge of the southern border? <laughs> and you got to wonder, how did this expert base her opinion on the laptop? Was it her own opinion or was it handed to her the way Joe was handed the presidency? It's the biggest disinformation story of the past two years, aside from whoever convinced CNN to start a streaming service. <laughs> that was me. Was she aware that when she spouted her disinformation, she would affect an election? Maybe that was the whole point. And later, when it's abundantly clear she was wrong, why isn't she owned up to it? I admit when I'm wrong, or at least I'm prepared to if that ever happens. <laughs> but she knew she lied to get Trump out and Biden in, and she's running this thing. Remember, as much as they say that they hate disinformation, the real doozies come from them. I mean, does Alejandro remember Whipgate? That was disinformation Biden exploited and then amplified, demonizing a DHS employee, a border dude on horseback, accusing him of whipping Haitian migrants. Now, he didn't have to be a longstanding member of one of the few S&M clubs located right here in Midtown Manhattan to know those weren't whips. I mean, it's nothing like a leather flogger. <laughs> <laughs> but they conducted an investigation on it, and once they realized their information turned out to be as legit as RuPaul's eyelashes, they said nothing. And this should piss you off. They're creating a ministry of information under the guise of protecting you, when really they're targeting you instead. You can't trust these people to monitor disinformation. That's like trusting Brian Stelter to guard your donut. <laughs> or asking Joy Behar to keep an eye on your broomstick. Ooh. It's like begging Hunter to keep an eye on your eight ball. Oh, that was my mistake. <laughs> it's like trusting Norman Bates to recommend a decent bed and breakfast. <laughs> Jankowitz is also a lefty clone, even echoing manic liberal reaction to Musk buying Twitter. If she ever came up with a thought of her own, it would die of loneliness. She told NPR that she shudders to think about more free speech after Musk bought Twitter and wondered if the First Amendment is a good thing for mar marginalized communities. And by marginalized communities, she means people who think jokes are acts of violence, while acts of violence are, well, free speech. I shudder to think about if free speech absolutists were taking over more platforms, what that would look like for the marginalized communities all around the world, which are already shouldering so much of this abuse, disproportionate amounts of this abuse. So much. She also recommended the government spend your money on a robust public media. Imagine that, all the boredom of NPR with the efficiency of the Department of Motor Vehicles. <laughs> and as unbiased as Will Smith reviewing a Jada Pinkett movie. 
She also applauded Twitter's efforts to censor users during the 2020 election, saying the platform moved in the right direction, which really means moving so far left, Mao would say, hmm, let's think this over. I wonder when this will come to the workplace. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the first meeting of the Gutfeld Disinformation Board. So does anyone have any uh, complaints? Uh, yeah, so last week when I was trapped in that elevator and you told Greg I was in Cancun, isn't that disinformation? I mean, you can see me on the elevator security camera. Okay, well, first of all, I'm, I am so sorry that you feel that way. Um, but we all know that unlike time travel, elevators haven't been invented yet, right? Uh, Kat, last time I was on panel, you promised I could get into hair and makeup. Then you were in there for six hours having your hair extensions done. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. my hair is real. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I think we can all agree that Greg is the guilty one here, right? I mean, remember when he said we couldn't have any bathroom breaks because COVID lives in your pee? <laughs> hey, everybody. Sorry I'm late. We can start the disinfo meeting now. Oh, there you go. So it appears... <laughs> It appears this White House is trying to create a new shiny arm of government to crack down on stuff they don't want to hear. The goal, to police your opinions, to hide their bad news, or magically turn it into good news. Hey, inflation's good for the economy. The crime rate is actually going down. Carjacking is really assertive carpooling. I wonder what their motto will be. Here's my suggestion. If you like your opinion, you can keep your opinion. Let's welcome Here tonight's is. guest. We call her the Georgia Peach because she was born in Atlanta and keeps throwing fruit in my head. <laughs> host of the Faulkner Focus and co-host of Outnumbered, Harris Faulkner. Wow. <laughs> His show starts so early, it should be called Fox and Friends and Meth. <laughs> co-host of Fox and Friends first, Todd Pyro. <laughs> Crowds tell him to quit his day job in the hope that he starves. <laughs> Actor, writer, and comedian Jamie Lissau. And finally, she never gets phased, even while being tased. Fox News contributor Cat Tip. Woo! Harris, 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 Harris. Stop. Okay. You're not the vice president. Yes. <laughs> and this I is, said whole, I want my name back. This is whole week has been about, oh, yeah. about speech, freedom of speech, and we, we're seeing lines being drawn. What do you make of this disinformation? Well, first of all, we got to see what that was going to look like today. A lot of it will be, can you watch the shiny object over there? So Mayorkas was on the Hill as this disinformation governance panel was being mm -hmm. rolled out today. And he and Representative Jim Jordan were really getting into it. Jim Jordan of Ohio. Right. He said, of all the terrorists that have been released, are there any going about the country, or did you send them down south, and, and below the border? Well, I, I, I can provide that. So that's not a no. And I mean, it got really, really heated. And it was right about the time that we were learning a lot of information about Nina Jankovic. Yeah. It's convenient, day two, and the timing of this. Right. And I don't believe in coincidences. I believe in interesting timing. And it was interesting for him, although the seat just got hotter. It's so funny. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> that was what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Must be some part of a bigger plan. Jamie, mm -hmm. how you doing over there? I'm great. Yeah, you're far away. I wish you were closer. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. <laughs> I wish there were wheels on this thing. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's awkward. <laughs> what do you make of this disinformation, uh, whatever? It, what is it called? It's a, it's a the, board. It's a the board. Governance. Governance. I was like so excited about Elon that I ignorantly thought like everyone would be excited, and it was just so disappointing. Mm -hmm. And just remind me like the the Hunter Biden laptop thing is insane. And I will say that did get me a little bit like paranoid just remembering that story. Like I get so paranoid about my laptop. Like, I don't know if you do this, but I always put, like, I use a little piece of black tape to cover my penis. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Is that in real so, life or projected on the screen? Yeah, so. Like, are they the same? Sorry. Just so nobody knows it's me. Yes. <laughs> but exciting about, I'm, I am legitimately excited about Elon on Twitter. Come on, this is yes. exciting stuff. Hardest part of the contract was getting it down to 200 and 80 characters. Oh, you. 
Yeah. <laughs> you went from a beautiful joke to just that. Could I try to recover with one more? Yes, please. So I just watch this though, and I get excited because I feel like a rich guy doing doing big things is right. exciting to watch, right? Right. Yeah. And so because Elon had, he's got f u money. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Like someday, I just hope to have. I respectfully disagree, money. Yes. <laughs> nice recovery. Yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. The judge. We'll get it to the judges later. <laughs> Todd, how are you doing? I'm okay. How are you? Sir? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. You look great. Thank you. You yeah. as well. Uh, you went to see the Yankees today. I did. Greg caught me. I should have been preparing, but I came fully dressed like Derek Jeter back to the yeah. studio. He's one of those guys that wears the jersey of the player that he likes, which is not at all obsessive and strange. <laughs> what do you make of this? How, like, how could they have picked somebody this obviously biased to run this thing? I think it goes beyond that. Obviously, she's an activist, but I want to focus on the Russian expert part of her yes. portfolio. She is probably a Russian expert in light of the fact that she dismissed the Hunter, Hunter Biden stuff. Like, I'm an expert in dance. Yes. I am not an expert in dance. Just look at me. <laughs> uh, but one of the key things that I found, and nobody's really talking about, the focus of this disinformation group is going to be the Hispanic community. Because there's concern about misinformation, radicalization, and election misinformation with regard to this community. Mm -hmm. Could this have anything to do with, I don't know, recent polling showing Hispanics are flocking to the GOP in record numbers? Flocking and potentially voting Republican is disinformation, clearly in the eyes of the Biden administration mm -hmm. and Nina Jankowitz. Mm -hmm. Crazy, crazy cat, I tell you. What is your thought on taxes paying for a disinformation board that will likely target you? Yeah, well, I'm against taxes, and those already <laughs> target me. Yes, they do. Uh, but I just don't understand who would trust that something's true just because the government says it's true. Mm -hmm. Because nobody has the ability to be able to lie like the government because they have power over all of us. Mm -hmm. And I don't see how anyone could want this. Like, okay, yeah, you can't say that that's not true because we say it's not true. If like if this was if this was a Trump thing, there would be like a massive meltdown over this. Of course. A massive I meltdown would, over this. I would it, And it, I would be melting down over it no matter who the president was. Mm -hmm. Because that's the whole point is that you be you're allowed to think and say whatever you want to and there's this is government sanctioned speech in a way. Exactly. And that actually that's exactly what it is. You know they have lost, and, and you brought up this point loosely, they have lost what they thought was going to be the gatekeeper on that. They've lost Twitter. Yeah. And so, you know, now it's like, well, what do we do? By the way, this is based on a center that already exists within the administration. They don't have the power of any punitive damages against you. All they can do is watch you. But in my book, I'm like you, Kat. That's enough to make me feel unnerved. Yeah, yeah. you know, I don't, I, I mean, I used to like being watched, but as I've gotten older, <laughs> I prefer to okay, keep watching. Okay, that's not what I meant. <laughs> oh, you know, ha Harris, sometimes I don't understand you. You know, I said this <laughs> earlier, we should start testing them. We should start finding out what the, the, the little uh, tripwires are by saying things on the show that could be considered as disinformation just to see what, what just to drive them crazy. I've got one. What? Wuhan laboratory origin possibly, potentially, most likely, and probably will be mm -hmm. COVID-19. There you and go. And that'll get you stickered and suspended. Exactly, I'm just saying. Exactly. Uh, I'm going to think of some more during the break. <laughs> <laughs> All right, before we go, this is so exciting. We're welcoming back our studio audience in a brand new studio that's going to blow your mind. That's this Monday, May 2nd, and we have a show that is insane. Like real guests, not like Jamie. <laughs> Free tickets. <laughs> Free tickets are available right now. Go to foxnews.com slash cuckbell for info. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.